Hey, welcome to the shop. Today we're talking about a question I have been asked many times. Can I get shocked when I'm welding? Well, most of our life we're dealing with electricity. It's in an enclosed box, it's in insulated wires, and now we're taking a device that can output hundreds of amps, enough to create blinding light, heat that can melt metal, and we're hooking this powerful thing to a large piece of metal that we're gonna be working with and touching. We probably better talk about this. Now before we get too far into this, just remember that your safety is your responsibility. And so while I believe all the information I'm gonna be sharing here is correct, every situation is different, so be sure to consult the proper medical or occupational safety and health professionals to answer your questions about your safety. Now let's talk a little bit about how electricity affects the human body. So we are conductive. That means electricity can pass through us. And when it does, it can have a lot of different effects. It can affect our nervous system, it can cause muscles to contract, and among other things, this can affect the function of our heart, which can be very dangerous. Now, what actually is harmful to us is the amount of current that passes through, but for a current to pass through us, it needs voltage to make it move. Let me use an analogy here to explain this. So voltage can be thought of like the pressure in a pipe that's pushing water through, and current can be thought of like the amount of water that's flowing through the pipe. So if you have a lot of water in a pipe, but there's a very small hole and there's not a lot of pressure, you're not gonna push much water through. And so you won't actually flow very much current even though a lot of water is available. It's the same way with electricity flowing through us that we resist the flow of electricity and so even though a lot of current may be available, it takes voltage to move it through. So usually to be dangerous, it comes down to the voltage that we're working with. Now the voltage that's dangerous depends on a lot of things and a lot of conditions. One thing that can have a significant effect is whether our skin or clothes are wet, right? Because that'll make it easier for electricity to pass through uh, us if there is water on there. So wet conditions can take a lower voltage and make it much more dangerous than it would have been otherwise. Now let's change gears a little bit and talk about how welding power supplies work because this is important to understand. At its core, a welding power supply is designed to take the electricity that comes from your electrical service, which is typically at a little bit higher voltage and outputs a lower current, and then you switch those to output a high current at a lower voltage. And this is done because that higher current and lower voltage are more effective for the welding arc. Now in a good quality machine that's operating properly, the primary circuit, which is that electricity coming in, and the secondary circuit, which is what goes out for welding, are completely separate circuits, and so they don't interact with one another. So the primary side of things is completely insulated and held in an enclosure like any other electrical appliance that you'd work with, and this keeps you safe as long as you don't have damaged cables or rip things apart and reach inside while it's plugged in, any of those kind of things. So we're gonna focus on the secondary circuit or the circuit that's used for welding. Now the voltage of that secondary circuit can vary quite a bit, and we're gonna get into that in a second, but it's important to understand when it's actually live because that depends on the type of machine that you have. Most MIG welders, wire feed welders, and TIG welders that have a separate amperage or uh, trigger switch control will not be live when you're not actually welding and that eliminates pretty much the whole hazard during your setup time. Now if you're dealing with a stick welder or a scratch start TIG welder, uh, where you're set up and it's live all the time, then you're going to have to be a little bit more cautious during your setup to make sure that you don't become part of the circuit. Now the voltage that's present in those welders that are live all the time when you're not welding is referred to as the open circuit voltage. And this can depend a lot on the type of welding power supply that you're using. And a lot of power supplies, more modern ones, will have something called a voltage reduction device, or uh, it's often called VRD, where it'll reduce your open circuit voltage down to a low amount until you start welding and then it will bump it up. And this is done to keep you safe so that you don't have that higher voltage floating around all the time. Unfortunately, this lower voltage for arc starting doesn't work with every electrode. Sometimes you have to have a higher open circuit voltage and turn that voltage reduction device off 
and that removes that layer of protection. So you need to be aware of that and it's a good idea to use it whenever you can. Now what you're trying to avoid is creating a path for the electricity to flow through you between your work that your work clamp is hooked to and the metal on the electrode or the electrode holder. You need to think about the whole path because if you have your work clamp connected to your work which is on a metal table that runs down and you have a puddle of water on the floor, then you have an electric path all the way down through your part, through your table, through the water, to your feet, and then all you need to do is touch that electrode holder and you can get severely hurt. So that's what you need to look out for is any kind of path that you might have between the metal on the electrode and the electrode holder and whatever your work clamp is connected to. So how do you protect yourself? Well, there are several layers of protection that you can put in place. The first thing is to make sure that your equipment is in good repair, all of the wires are fully insulated, and the housing is in good shape and closed up. Make sure to always wear the right personal protective equipment, including good quality welding gloves without any holes or problems with them. Next, always avoid welding in wet conditions because that can create an additional path for electricity to flow through and make it possible for lower voltages to become more hazardous. Put your electrode holder away while you're working on setup, and if your machine has a voltage reduction device to drop your open circuit voltage down, definitely use it wherever you can. Now don't take your machine apart and try to fix it and poke around in there if you're not qualified to do so, especially if the machine is plugged in. And last and most importantly, just be smart and think about the principles that we've talked about here today and make sure that you're looking out for yourself to make sure that you're safe and you can have a great time while you're welding. Hey, well, if you learned something here today or if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that thumbs up below. We'll see you next time.